Hello and welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program for a complete newbies tutorial. This is Jason. Uh, the last couple of sessions, we first built a rocket that went up and gathered some science. Then we built a rocket that went into space. Then we built a rocket that orbited Kerbin. And today we're going to build a rocket that's going to leave Kerbin's orbit. Well, not technically. It's going to go beyond Kerbin's orbit and enter the moon's sphere of influence. So we can run some scientific tests around the moon and get some more data to unlock some awesome new technologies. So that being said, we're going to need a slightly powerful ship than the one we had before and a slightly different design and a slightly different way of flying it. So we're going to start out much the same way with a command pod, which we'll put here. And working backwards, just like we had last time, to start with parachutes because we want to land safely. And we'll do a second parachute. The radial chutes worked really well. Um, I guess full disclosure, I uh, couldn't actually land that ship without the radial chutes last time. <laughs> so that's why they're a really good addition. <laughs> uh, because we need uh, the Science Junior can't survive uh, an impact much beyond. Oh, actually, I can show you. Um, impact tolerance, uh, 6.0 meters per second. You can see it there. So when we were coming in at 6.7, uh, that was a little too much for the poor science junior to handle, which is why it uh, would have exploded if we didn't have the, uh, the extra parachutes on the side, uh, as I learned the hard way when making the last video. So I'm just putting the rest of the scientific instruments, the mystery gear containers, uh, and the barometer, the thermometer on the side. Now, this is where we're gonna start doing things a little bit differently. Uh, this ship is going to have, sort of my ass, a heat shield. So you can see the round of it, the bottom of it is round. So, um, and it contains a sort of a resource that sloughs off as you burn through the atmosphere. And because we're gonna be going so much faster this time around as we're coming back in, uh, we're gonna need that to keep this part of the ship from completely burning up. So, stack the coupler to keep this top stage apart. All right, so the thing we want to do after this, or rather before this, is return from the moon. The best way to do that is with a smaller fuel tank like the one, or a medium-sized fuel tank like the one you see here, and a very small fuel-efficient engine. So the Terrier here, which is just some, something we just unlocked, has a smaller mass than the Reliant, 1.25 to 1.5. Uh, it is a much more fuel efficient engine. So with a medium sized fuel tank like this and a, a fuel efficient engine like this, a craft like this size will have a fairly large amount of Delta V. In fact, so much that uh, we could probably potentially even do some deeper space exploration with it if it came down to that. But uh, for, our, for our purposes right now, we're just gonna swing around the moon and come back. So, stage. So our next stage is going to be the thing that gets us from Kerbin's orbit out to the moon. So we're going to need a couple of fuel tanks this time and a bigger engine to push all this mass that's on top. I'm going to go with a swivel because at this point in the rocket's flight, it's going to be uh, in space um, and it's going to need probably a little bit more than just uh, the reaction wheel in the command pod to keep it pointed in the right direction. Okay, three radial couplers. Uh, and then this first stage, this, the stage we're building next, is gonna be what gets us mostly into orbit. I suspect that we're gonna get fairly high up and then probably get rid of these side rockets, these boosters, uh, and switch over to uh, that swivel engine that we just put on there. Um, and I'm going to put a 200 on top, just because I feel like we're going to need just a little extra push. And for this first stage, I want something that's a little stronger, so we're going to stick the Alliance on there. Uh, and I'm going to stage this. Oh, well, let's worry about staging in a second. Um, so this this one's gonna we're gonna really start cooking as we move. So we're gonna put the aerodynamic nose cones on the top, which will help kind of push the air aside. Um, so we want to put these winglets 
on the sides of the rockets. This will give us uh, much better control as we climb. And I, some designers don't do this, but I tend to because I feel like adding a second set of winglets to the second stage like that gives you a better, um, gives you even better control, which especially when you're talking about rockets like this, uh, does really matter. Um, okay, let's go ahead and just save the ship now. We'll call it the John, since we're doing the Garfield. Uh, how about like a Liz the Fat? So the Liz the Fat rocket. Save. Um, so yeah, we're looking pretty good. So the other thing we unlocked last time that's going to be very important to this is struts. Struts make sure that your rocket does not fly apart um, when you're when you have a lot of thrust. And right now, the only point, of, if we hadn't put these struts on just now, the only point of contact between the boosters and the main rocket would have been these couplers. And the top of the rockets would have started moving around uh, as the thrust kind of caused the rocket to shake. So we need the struts to keep things, to keep them, first of all, at a distance from each other, but also uh, at a distance from, to secure them from the rocket itself. So. Um, once you get big enough, with your rockets large enough, uh, struts, you probably never have too many of them. Uh, that's, I'm sure that's not true, I'm sure you probably could, but uh, I tend to put, use a lot of struts when I, when I construct a rocket. Um, right now, because weight is still a factor and struts do weigh things, I'm just dragging the rocket down here, you'll see why in a second, uh, struts do weigh things. I feel like it's uh, important to kind of keep it to a minimum. So these uh, these um, launch, I guess, whatever they're called, stability enhancers. Uh, basically, this is just a little tower uh, that will keep the rocket up. So we want the tower to decouple at the exact same time the primary engines fire. So we're staging those together. And when we launch, uh, when we decouple the boosters from the main rocket, we want the main rocket's engine to fire. So I'm going to slide that down to that stage, uh, which means our staging is all correct. Let's get our crew. I'm sending Annie on this amazing flight. She's going to be the first Kerbal out towards the Mun. Save, and let's head into space. Okay. So much like last time, the launch is going to be pretty similar. The only thing I'm doing differently this time around is I'm not going to engage the SAS to keep us pointed prograde. I'm going to bring it up because once we get up there, I want it to help me with my maneuver node. But until I get at least above the uh, at least above the atmosphere, I'm not going to engage the SAS because um, it's this reaction wheel and these uh, these winglets are going to start fighting each other for control of the rocket. And it'll actually just be easier for me to control it by hand. So um, we'll see how well we can fly. I will kind of narrate as I'm going what I'm doing so you guys can get a sense of it. Um, it's going to be a lot of WASD and then Q and E to rotate the rocket back and forth. Here we go. Three, two, one, to the moon. So far, so good. So this 
can see now uh, we're going fast enough that I'm still thinking of that was for that's a fire going on. Um, that's not great because that means we're burning fuel inefficiently. <laughs> um, so there we go, lose our boosters and ignite. So I'm actually going to throttle down using the control key so we're not burning quite as much. Quite so now we're going back to the map. So our apoapsis. than I wanted it to go. That's fine though. All right, we're gonna add our maneuver node. So burning prograde to increase our periapsis. So you can see just kind of hovering over those indicators tells you what they are. So that's pretty good. It's not entirely, no, we're not very circular, but that's okay. So. Uh, we're going to have our SAS get us over to our maneuver node. We have a 32 second burn in one minute, 32 seconds. So we're going to start that burn at about t node in T minus uh, 16 seconds, so half that, half the uh, estimated burn time. And just kind of like looking back at our resources, so we have we still have about half of the liquid fuel in this stage left, and. We're up here in space. Well, we're not actually even in space yet. So let's see if there's some science we can grab from the upper atmosphere. There it is. Ta-da. Oh, now we're in space. <laughs> a little bit of science from a mystery goo. Why not? Grab some stuff here. Yeah, we have the already overused our... Yeah, that's fine. So we grabbed a little bit of science. Um, we will be grabbing some more here as we go. And actually, I probably should have drawn that mystery goo uh, from the upper atmosphere, but I think we can grab that on the way back. And it occurs to me I should have run the Science Junior on the launch pad. That's okay. We can do that next time. There will always be next time. So, so just circling around, drifting through the night sky. The sun's on the other side of Kerbin right now. You can vaguely see the rocket here. Toot toot. There's the, there's the moon, that's where we're ultimately going. All right. Just keeping an eye on the time. We've got T minus 20 seconds mark. Burn in 16. So, hitting Z for full throttle. Switching over to the map screen as much as I enjoy the with the graphics, because this is actually a much better way to accurately tell what's going on. <laughs> That's okay. Though. Yep, we sure did. Okay, so I killed the velocity. So I can do this more precisely just by hitting shift. There we go. X. All right, so we have an apoapsis of 84,000 meters, 70,000 meter periapsis, just above the atmosphere. That's pretty good. You don't get much better than that. Okay. I'm going to go EVA. Let's see if we can grab an EVA report from any place interesting. My guess is probably not, but it never hurts to check. So, I'm going to grab the data from the Science Junior and from the Materials Bay. We're going to restore and restore. We're going to store our experiments and board the ship. Okay. 
So here we go. Um, the spaceship, the Garfield spaceship, Liz, that is circling carbon. There's our, there's our orbit. So the moon, uh, its orbit is much farther out. You can see its altitude's 11 uh, million meters compared to our 70,000. So um, we're going to have to figure out how to get out there. So quick pop quiz. We want to increase our uh, apoapsis. Now, we would normally burn at our periapsis to do that for the most fuel efficiency, but our, as you can see, our periapsis is fairly close to where the moon is. So what we want to do is add a prograde maneuver here-ish that will, as you can see us burning prograde, start increasing our apoapsis. You can see the amount of delta V. Once you get far enough away from Kerbin, the amount of delta V it takes to do a maneuver like this. So right now, 844 meters to get 9 million. But only 862 to get 11. So a lot of that burn is in the early part as we're trying to fight away from uh, Kerbin's gravity. So, uh, and increase our velocity. So we're going to start, we can grab the maneuver node, slide it along your path, as we're doing here, to change where you end up. And so we've put our apoapsis at about 11 million feet, eventually, oh, there we go. We have an encounter with the moon. So, drag this. So this puts us at a, peri a moon periapsis of 217,000 meters above the moon, which isn't too shabby, but if you kind of zoom out, you can see that, good for us, that maneuver will actually fling us completely out of Kerbin's sphere of influence. Um, so if we were looking to do a gravity-assisted maneuver, that would be great. Whoops, I'm drawing on the wrong thing. I wanted to get our periapsis down, which is good. I want to do that eventually. So... So as you can see, you can kind of fiddle with it. It's still gonna fling us way the heck out there. But you know what? It might not be a bad idea. It might not be a bad idea at all. Because that gets us real close to the moon. Flip around and come back. I don't know. So we have 11 days to make this actually work. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So, in eight minutes, we have a one minute, six second burn to get us out to the moon. And we're gonna come close enough to the moon, we're gonna be 14,000 meters over the surface. And that is really ideal, because it's going to allow us to get the maximum amount of science from our little flyover here. And if we burn at the correct point, we should be able to clip this orbit and come back into the curve without too much of a problem. I'll explain as we go. So, here we are. If this doesn't work, our next video is going to be a rescue mission. <laughs> okay, uh, we are going to fast forward time. We want to start burning at about 33 seconds. The SAS for keeping Resource check. 33 seconds, here we go. Hold on. Are following along, trying 
Yes. Um, you don't. You do not have to. You do not have to. Uh, So a few things before we start warping here. So you can see that we've got an encounter with the moon coming up in three hours, 31 minutes. What that means is that's when the sphere of influence, the, the, the gravity, the sphere of influence of gravity changes from Kerbin over to the moon. And then when we escape from the moon uh, in a day, um, that's when we go out of the moon's uh, gravitational influence and we'll be back in Kerbin's gravitational influence. Although you can see that it's got us escaping from in nine days, which, <laughs> you know, um, we may need to, we'll have to, we'll solve that problem when we get there. It'll be fine. So it's good. We've got a little bit more than uh, a third of our gas left. So hello moon, here we come. Um, so until we get, let's switch back over here. So we're 121,000 feet now. I want to get us to see Kerbin disappearing there. Say it's about here. We can now run a new batch of experiments, I think. Yes. So you can say that our you can see that our biome uh, has changed to in space high over Kerbin. So that gives us a whole new batch of experiments to run, which gives us a whole new batch of science points to get. Blue feels at home up here. Well that's not surprising. We'll observe our materials bay. Pretty good. It's 37 science from that materials bay. Barometer. Thermometer. Last but not least, we're going EVA. Collecting data, restoring the bay. Collecting data, collecting data. Taking data, restoring experiments. Boarding. Alright. Liz the vet is on its way towards the moon. Because it's fun, I'm going to show what approaching the moon looks like from here. Yeah, pretty cool. There we go. And you can see, I don't know if you noticed our velocity really decreasing as we were escaping, or the further we get from Kerbin. Let's see an hour before they do. What that means is once we get back uh, from an orbit this far out, we're going to be going much, much faster, which is why we needed that heat shield. I'm going to switch over. That would be the problem. And here we go. We have our moon encounter. Okay. So we are now high above the moon. Yeah, she's loving it. So. That gives us a whole new batch of science experiments to run. Yeah, 50 science for running this experiment. Pretty cool. Good stuff. Get a crew report. Let's go get it. Take our data.
here we go. So, while we are uh, heading around to the moon here, I'm going to see if I can set a maneuver that will swing us back. This time I want to bring retro. I want something that's going to swing us back. So you can see I can actually orbit the moon if I want to, but I really don't. What I want to do is get back to Kerbin. This puts us all the way out almost to Minmus. But it's a pretty good burn, so I'm going to go ahead and tell our SAS to get ready for this maneuver once we want to do it. And you know what? I think I'm going to actually turn this into a two-part video because I just looked at the time and realized we've been going for quite a while. So, uh, my last, uh, the last thing we're going to do before we go any farther is hit F5, which is our quick save function, which is something I haven't told you about yet, but always a good idea to do before you do any sort of risky maneuver. So, F5 quick saves. Uh, and on that note, I'm going to go ahead and leave us here, and I will see you guys next time as we do the second half of this video.